And for anyone who has been infected with the COVID-19 virus, there's a chance that your symptoms won't fade as soon as you'd like. In fact, the CDC says there are currently 24 million U.S. adults dealing with long COVID. Here's more in this segment sponsored by the group Solve Long COVID. And with me today, we have Dr. Peter Rowe, as well as patient Cynthia Adenig, who is living with long COVID. I appreciate both of you being here with us. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. You know, Dr. Rowe, let's talk about the definition first and foremost. What exactly is long COVID? So it's a term that refers to persistent uh, symptoms after an acute COVID-19 infection. The CDC suggests that it need, the symptoms need to persist for at least a month, and the World Health Organization says at least three months. But uh, we know that many patients are sick two and a half years into the pandemic and unable to leave their home, so it can be quite severe. The main symptoms are a debilitating degree of fatigue, exhaustion when you exceed even a, a, a mild amount of physical activity, lots of cognitive problems, so difficulty with concentration and attention, uh, problems uh, throughout the rest of the body wherever the virus has had an impact, and that includes high high heart rates, low blood pressure, and inadequate blood flow to the brain. So it's a wide-ranging set of symptoms uh, and can be quite disabling. And, and is there any indication as to who is at greater risk? Does vaccination status make a difference? So we have a little bit of information on that, but it's an evolving field. People who have uh, a lot of uh, chronic health conditions appear to be at greater risk, so obesity, diabetes. Women are at higher risk as well. Vaccination helps protect you from long COVID, but not completely. The, the risks of uh, long COVID are higher in the unvaccinated, so we encourage people to get vaccinated as a way of protecting themselves. But even the vaccinated patients can get breakthrough infections. So one of the problems is that as the virus circulates continuously, more and more people are going to get this. Yeah, and one of those people was Cynthia. So I want to hear about your experience, Cynthia, and how you've been dealing with long COVID. My experience with long COVID began in March 2020, where I had a mild case of COVID, just maybe two days of sniffles. And that eventually escalated into a life-threatening, terrifying illnesses and symptoms um, from the long COVID. And so I experienced exceedingly high heart rate, um, dangerously low oxygen, um, crippling fatigue to where I couldn't even brush my hair. And I also experienced an allergic type reaction to a wide range of food and water. And those um, things led me to become um, wheelchair dependent for several months and even bedridden for several months and a year I was unable to work. Um, those in two and a half years into long COVID, I still have um, disabling symptoms and I'm, I'm mostly homebound. And uh, have you found any relief? Is there any message you want to put out there, you know, as far as research, as far as kind of advancing treatments for this? Oh, absolutely. The MECFS community that um, Dr. Peter Rowe was talking about was really helpful in me managing my symptoms. There's not a lot of doctors that are um, specialized in this area, so there's not enough doctors for the need that we have. And there's also not a lot much research about how to fully recover. So we need way more funding, and that's what makes a solvelongcovid.org um, super helpful for patients, and they can learn more about um, long COVID there. Okay, definitely visit that website and you can learn all about this initiative. Cynthia, thank you for sharing with us. Dr. Rowe, appreciate your time today. Thank, thank you. you. And that segment sponsored by solvelongcovid.org. Our other sponsors,